Throw a party, go, go, go. Troy. Come. Rapsy. Rapsy. Good girl. Throw a party. Throw a party. Good girl. New Mexico State University has gone to the dogs. Fortunately, that's positive news for students in the school's Agricultural, Consumer, and Environmental Sciences, or ACES College. In the Facility for Investigating Dog Owner Learning and Behavior, or FIDO Lab, students can teach puppies up to 15 months old basic obedience and socialization skills. Once trained, the canines head to Guide Dogs for the Blind, a nonprofit guide dog school in California for formal training. It's Eliza Voigt's first time training dogs professionally. The animal science senior is raising Shuttle, a one-year-old black Labrador retriever. Voigt teaches Shuttle basic obedience skills and commands like sit, stand, and heal, calls a blind person would use daily. Our most important role as a puppy raiser is to socialize the puppies and um, take them to basically every situation that a blind person could probably come in contact with. Um, so I take Shuttle with me everywhere. He goes with me to church, goes with me to the mall, often, um, goes with me to all my classes, and um, he goes with me to the restroom. He goes with me everywhere. Like, he's he's my uh, basically my little partner in crime. There's a handful of little partners in the Fido Lab. Shuttle, along with his four-legged friends Cece and Rhapsody, learn more than to come or lay down. They're taught proper positioning, impulse control, and to only eat food fed to them, never off the ground. And Olivia is going to treat her because that was really hard for her. There was a treat right by her paw and she left it. That was really, really good. Dr. Galene Fasenko runs the Companion Animal Program. While any dog can be a companion animal, Fasenko says Guide Dogs for the Blind breeds Labrador Retrievers, Golden Retrievers, or a mix of both. But the larger the dog, Fasenko says, the bigger the responsibility. It's like having a baby or a toddler as the, as the dog grows. It is a huge commitment. Um, it is not just about getting a puppy and loving on it and taking it home and playing with it. There is, uh, we follow uh, training protocols from Guide Dogs for the Blind. They use positive reinforcement. We don't use any positive punishment uh, style training. And the reason is that we want these dogs to form a good bond with us. Those bonds are formed early, like the one between animal science junior Shanae Smith and Kondo, a 15-week-old yellow lab. A first-time trainer herself, Smith says she's learning how big of a responsibility it is raising a puppy. She's not old enough to have paws on the ground yet, so we have to carry her to every single place we go to. Until she has all of her shots and she's old enough, which is 16 weeks, then she can start putting on a vest and going out in public with us and we can start the more intense training of like being out with other people and in different environments. So I'm going to drop the bucket to make a loud noise and the dogs it's okay if they look at the bucket to see what made the noise, but we don't want them being fearful of it. And they all just looked and were like, hey, what was that? And that's exactly the kind of reaction we want. Because a blind person will be exposed to a variety of situations, Voigt says guide dogs need to be ready for anything. To adjust to outside stimuli, the pooches take walks around campus, go into restaurants, and even mingle with the sheep next door. The dog has to be accustomed to the different sounds of traffic, um, the different sights and smells, the people, and um, we don't know if they're going to go to a big city or to an urban area where there's going to be uh, different like farms and stuff like that. So it's definitely something that we have to try to expose them to as much as possible as we can now in a positive way so that way when they're with their blind handler um, they're not scared they're not fearful they're confident and most importantly they're focused on their job. Fasenko says part of that job includes the ability to make their own choices as Smith explains that's because they'll be applying what's called intelligent disobedience. So you have to teach them everything from learning to disobey an owner when they want them to do a task for them that's not going to be safe for the handler. So they have to learn intelligent disobedience. So if you want to cross the street but there's a car coming, the dog has to know that it's not safe to make the owner go across the street. Both Voigt and Smith say one of the most challenging parts of being a trainer is to not become too attached to their dogs. But they know it's for a worthy cause, one that benefits not only the person who receives the dog, Fasenko says, but also who raises it. Guide Dogs for the Blind has the motto, raise a puppy, change a life. And when we first got into this, we thought that that really meant if you raise the puppy, you're going to change a disabled blind person's life. Okay. We didn't realize it was going to change our lives. Bring the leash, bring the leash. Good girl. <laughs> For KRWG Public Media, I'm Michael Hernandez.